The Songs of Distant Earth is the 16th album by Mike Oldfield, released in 1994 by Warner Music. It is based on Arthur C. Clarke's science fiction novel The Songs of Distant Earth. <laughs> Release details The album was released as a CD and, shortly afterwards, as an enhanced CD of which two versions were made. Both versions' initial pressings contained an image of a manta ray flying in front of a planet on the front cover. The cover image was changed to one of a suited man holding a glowing orb with manta rays flying overhead. The second pressing of the enhanced CD shown at top right contains slightly more multimedia content, including the full version of the Let There Be Light video. The CD audio content is the same on all versions of the album. It was also released as a vinyl LP, which has become a rare item. The enhanced CD content, for Apple Macintosh PO RPC computers only, was rendered on silicon graphics computers and used Apple's QuickTime 2 technology. The re-release back cover lists the CD-ROM track as track 000 where all tracks have a three-digit number, and a length of 0 hundred. Produced in 1994, it was an early example of enhanced CD content. Oldfield used Imagic Logic Audio for sequencing and Pro Tools hardware for the recording of the album using a combination of tape and hard drive recording. Topic: <laughs> Track listing. In the beginning, 124 let There Be Light, 452. Supernova, 329. Magellan, 441. First Landing, 116. Oceania, 327. Only Time Will Tell, 419. Prayer for the Earth, 210. Lament for Atlantis. 244 The Chamber 149 Hibernaculum 332 Tubular World 323 The Shining Ones 259 Crystal Clear 542 The Sunken Forest 239 Ascension 548 a New Beginning", 133 Inspiration The then chairman of Warner, Rob Dickens, suggested to Oldfield that he should produce an album based on Clark's novel, The Songs of Distant Earth. The LP cover and CD booklet of the album contain a foreword by Arthur C. Clarke about the evolution of The Songs of Distant Earth from short story to novel. It ends with the following about the album. Since the finale of the novel is a musical concert, I was delighted when Mike Oldfield told me that he wished to compose a suite inspired by it. I was particularly impressed by the music he wrote for The Killing Fields and now, having played the CD-ROM of The Songs of Distant Earth, I feel he has lived up to my expectations. Welcome back into space, Mike, there's still lots of room out here. This was not the first time that Oldfield's music had been connected with the books of Arthur C. Clarke. Prior to the Songs of Distant Earth, Oldfield released Tubular Bells 2, which contained a track called, Sentinel. The title of a short story written by Arthur C. Clarke that later evolved into 2001, A Space Odyssey Another track from Tubular Bells 2 is called, Sunjammer. The Arthur C. Clarke short story, The Wind from the Sun, had the working title of, Sunjammer.
Topic Personnel Greg Jackman, Assistant Engineer Steve McMillan, Assistant Engineer Tom Newman, Assistant Engineer Richard Berry, Technical Engineer Eric Cadieu, Additional Programming Mark Rutherford, Additional Rhythm Loops and Programming Sugar J, Additional Rhythm Loops Pandit Dinesh, Tablas Molly Oldfield, Keyboards Corey Hosius, Vocalist Ella Harper, Vocalist Nils Aslak Valkayapa a Vocalist and Composer performs his Yoik, dubbed as Prayer for the Earth on the album David Nicholas, Vocalist Rome, Vocalist Members of Verulam Consort, Vocalists The Tallest Scholars, Vocalists Mike Joseph, Self Hypnosis Tape Vahine Taihara, Tubwai Choir Apollo 8 Astronaut Bill Anders reading from the Book of Genesis while orbiting the Moon on Christmas Eve, 1968. <laughs> <laughs> Certifications and Sales <laughs>